Good morning, folks. We've got weather, satellite risk, and indirect corroboration of the cosmic ray volcano connection. Alma delivers another surprise from space, and Antarctica roars into the ocean climate discussion. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we can see fairly unambiguously the coronal hole extends south past the bright active region behind it. Seismic concerns on the rise here in Observerville. The solar wind plateaued in intensity as the density fell back a bit and the geomagnetic storm has given way to more modest instability. It is worth noting that the sunspots are indeed decayed below these umbral magnetic fields. It's about as useful to watch the plasma tornadoes dancing around the limbs. Coming back to quakes for a moment, couple areas taking blood echoes. This is just one of them. Everyone on this map the last day was at depth, but we also have four shot clusters without blood echoes. So seismic forecasters, you have a bit more challenging day ahead here. Quick peek in on Australia. Powerful storm front taking out power and tearing roofs off homes. The cold was reintroduced into the region as the flows came straight northward out of Antarctic waters and turned it white. Happy spring in the south. Let's discuss satellites next. Space debris, a cascading impact and shattering that puts other craft at risk. It's more than losing the science or communication. We can lose entire satellites due to those collisions. What we don't want is critical systems returning to Earth like this. A new study is demonstrating that the tiny but still dangerous pieces of space debris are a big problem, and they're getting worse. Sure, most likely if a satellite were to re-enter, it would impact the oceans, but it is simple calculus that at this rate, the satellite collisions could become catastrophic based on only the micro specs in a couple of decades. Let's go deep into space with ALMA. Combining with Hubble shots, they're able to stretch the returns over time and see exactly how much depth exists within their 2D images. The key point here is that yet again they found the unexpected. They know about galaxies with both low stellar mass and low star forming rates and would have never expected such titanic gas reservoirs to them. The trend of looking back and seeing much more than expected continues, and it's nice to see this one discussing the gas, which will be largely ionized, when we've seen about six in a row on the hidden dust. I think the gas was starting to feel left out. Folks, we are at the modern cosmic ray maximum and rising by the year. These cosmic rays have been tied to numerous meteorological, technological, and human health phenomena, but also to volcanic eruptions. Since many penetrate into the mantle, they are able to affect the viscosity of the mantle, interacting with melted or melting crystals, and influencing explosive eruptions. We get an indirect look in that direction today as those crystals and their effect on viscosity is solidified as a factor in violent volcanic events. It is rudimentary that the crystals are subject to modulation by the energetic forces of the cosmic rays, but it was conjectured that they messed with the viscosity and the eruptive phase. It's not so much conjecture anymore. Folks, it's been an interesting 2020 for ocean science. We've seen continued confirmation that polar ice loss disrupts the warm status of the other latitudes. The models are clear, and so are the observations of the ongoing shutdown of the Gulf Stream, the effects on the heat exchange, and the overturning circulation. It's the movie, Day After Tomorrow. It just takes longer than a week to freeze the world. And we've also seen that the Beaufort Gyre is still holding tightly onto its cold climate bomb ready to dump a record amount of that cold, fresh water into the Atlantic and affect those heat flows that make it so people can live at some of the higher latitudes we currently occupy. Well, now it's time to get Antarctica involved, and he's feeling jaded after such a long absence from this oceanic discussion. There's no teamwork here, it's just a race to the finish, and as a matter of absolute fact, Sea ice dynamics, such as the ones we're discussing, are left out of most of the modern climate models because they show the cooling trigger and they destroy the global warming propaganda. But when they are added in, indeed the cold freshwater melt produces thick sea ice, cooler atmospheric conditions, and an extension of spread of the sea ice. No escape. If we try to heat the earth more, the process will go faster and harder. While they pass the gatekeepers and peer review by saying they don't think this will completely counteract global warming, they were not at all shy about saying this is going to cause considerable cooling and the effects are going to be felt worldwide. The jaded competition comes in because they say Antarctica can chill the entire world so quickly it might even shut down the melting in the Arctic, which slows down the day after tomorrow situation. I'm not so sure that's great news when it's an Antarctic challenger for the genesis of cold. Essentially, it's north versus south. While most are worried about warmth, they are at each other's throats trying to see which one gets to throw this planet back into an ice age. Ocean shutdowns. 
ongoing. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.